my name is Anna. I'm a senior naturalist at the Harris County Precinct 1 at Lake Sunset Dusan Park. Uh, but what is a naturalist? A naturalist is somebody that studies nature. Nature is all around you. Without nature, we would not be able to survive. Today, we're going to be creating a nature journal. This is an example of a nature journal that one of my participants that participated in one of our programs actually created. And now you can see, he's not only a nature journal, but he also has his uh, self-portrait in there. He's actually writing under the tree and he's actually putting notes in the journal that he created, which is this one. But before we start, I want you to think what a, what a journal is. A journal is something to keep a record. So we can, if you do a personal journal, then what you're doing is you're just describing your feelings, what happens to you every day. It can be weekly, what happens to you weekly, monthly. But it's a, something to keep a record of your life. But before they were paper, how did people actually keep a record of their lives? Right? If they didn't have a cell phone to take a picture, like we do now, or a camera, or a book, or even paper, how do they do it? They either paint it in caves like this, they paint in rocks, they carve images, and they told stories. And those stories, and those painting caves, it was very important for other people that came after them to actually know what had happened in their lives. Now this one in here is actually the one that I want to concentrate because this one in here is pretty cool. This one is from South America from 25,000 years ago. And you can see it has fences, it has people, it has the animals that they have around them. So this one in here, it tells me not only what they had as food or what animals they saw, it actually is a record of their community, what was around them. Scientists and naturalists use nature journals for documentation. What nature looks like maybe 10 years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years, 200 years ago, 500 years ago. Okay. And why do you know those old nature journals are important? The reason for that is to do what we call ecological reconstructions. If we didn't have a record of what nature looked like, like say in this habitat, okay, and we something happened, it's not what it used to be, either because of development, fire, uh, deforestation, something happened to it. The only way we can bring that habitat back to what it looked like is using old journals, old journals, to figure out what kind of plants live there, what kind of animals live there, and try to bring it back to what it looked at the time before whatever destruction happened. So this image that I'm going to show you right now, it's very important. This was done by John Audubon. John Audubon was a painter and a naturalist. He came to the Americas to keep a record of all the wildlife that he saw as well with plants, not just by writing it down, but also by doing drawings like this and then doing the watercolor on top of it to actually show the colors of the bird like you see right here. Without this record over 200 years ago, we would not know that this bird existed because guess what? This bird became extinct. So this is one of the few re records we have that this bird ever living here. So that's one example of why it's important to keep uh, nature journals and to not just, you know, to document what you see outside. Because what you see might not be here 10 years, 100 years in the future. So that's why we wanna keep journals. So now that we talked about this, now let's go to the fun part. Let's create a nature journal together. We're going to need some supplies. We need cardstock, that's a heavier paper, so we can actually use that as a cover. We're going to need some uh, copying paper or printing paper so we can actually use it for the inside. We're going to need a rubber band, a hole pantry, uh, markers, a crayon, something to actually decorate your journal with, uh, the cover, and a pencil to write inside. A stick, I know, right? A stick from nature, you can get those outside. If you don't have uh, some of the supplies we have, we can also do something different. And we also are going to need some uh, uh, string or shoelace or ribbon or something of the sort to actually tie the journal together. If you don't have a whole puncher, you cannot create that way. So let's put together. You lay flat the cardstock and the copy papers. Then you fold it in half like this and make sure 
that the edges are all the cardstock in the at all align and then you press it really hard in the spine by the way this is the spine of a book that's the spine of this one as well so if you want everything to line up perfect as possible then you punch the holes but don't get too close to the edge because if you get too close to the edge then you got it like your papers inside are not going to be actually have being able to be hold together with the outside you take the rubber band and you put it through one of the holes in there put it around the stick once one piece of the stick and then you pull it in the back of the book to the other hole the rubber band and you put it to the other end of the stick into the outside so that i stick is actually in the cover part the rubber band is in the back just like this okay uh, now that we created our nature journal with the stick now let's do the same thing with the ribbon you start the same way you fold it in half make sure the cover the cardstock is in the outside you open in half right in the middle you pick it up the ribbon insert inside Pull the ribbon through, make sure that both sides of the ribbon are about even. You're going to tie a knot, put your finger right where it is, and then to hold it down so you can tie a nice pretty bow. And there it is. There is your note your journals. Now they will create our nature journal. Let's decorate. Let's decorate the outside. Do whatever you feel like. You can draw anything. You can use stamps. You can trace. You can do whatever you want. It's yours. Use your imagination. In the inside, the first page, maybe you want to put your picture. Take it like, you know, you have a photo of you. You can put it in there. You can actually draw yourself. You can also put your name in it so that people know that it is yours and nobody else's. There are no rules when it comes to nature journal. There's no right or wrong way to keep a nature journal. Just take a walk outdoors and describe what you see. Describe the sound, smells, and how it feels to be outside. Your journal might include sketches or drawings. You don't have to make pretty pictures. I can't, I cannot draw. But I can use my observations and descriptions and actually write on it, and that's how I can keep a record of it. I can also trace a leaf that if I find something, I can trace it. I can actually put things in my journal. You don't have to look very far. Nature is all around you. As soon as you go out, step outside, there's nature. It can be in your backyard. It can be in a neighborhood park. It can also be in the crack in a sidewalk in front of your house. With an adult permission, go outside and find a safe place to explore. Make sure there is no poison ivy, which is this plant right here that I'm showing to you right now. It's one stem. Three leaves coming out of it, the edges are serrated, okay, like this, like a knife, okay? And make sure also there's nothing else that can hurt you. If you cannot identify something you see, that's okay. Ask an adult. Search the internet with an adult's permission. Check out a book in the library. Or ask somebody like me. My email is ana.aita-cherry at cp1.hctx.net and again if you don't have the supplies we, we just did our journal with that's okay use an old notebook the most important thing is to go out and have fun but be safe at all times and also if you want to look it up we also have different videos at our Harris County Precinct 1 YouTube channel and if you want to find anything else about nature that's a good place to start. Have fun and enjoy. Bye.